Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography. So in this session on climatology, we are going to discuss about the interesting concept of air mass. So what is this air mass? How it is different from a common air and what are its various types across the globe? So let's understand in today's session but before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also share the videos with others as well. So now, let's understand the concept of air masses. What are these air masses? Remember we talked about something air masses related in the monsoon as well, the concept of air mass theory. So let's understand how these air masses become important, right? So when the air remains over a homogeneous area for a sufficiently longer time. Now remember this has to do with the land area, right? Or ocean area for that matter. The area has to be specified. Now here is the first point. So it has to be a homogeneous area. The first catch is here. If the area is homogeneous basically means what? It has a similar kind of landscape, right? The characteristic of landscape basically determines what? The insulation and albedo factors, all those are important. Also the temperature and pressure gradients and the factors associated with the topography that is influencer. So if there is a homogeneous area basically means what? It will have similar kind of climatic conditions throughout. Right? And what will happen if it is related to the air which is there for a longer time? This air will acquire the characteristics of the area. So it is basically meaning what? If you go to a particular country and if you start living there for 5 years, 10 years, gradually what you do? You start living in their ways, in their traditions, in their customs. Right? Gradually your nature starts to also get along the nature of that area. It's very similar, right? So what happens? These air masses also actually acquire the characteristics of the area they belong to. So that is important here. The homogeneous regions can be vast ocean surface as well or vast plain areas also and also vast plateau areas as well, right? So whatever be the surface, it has to be homogeneous. That is the first principal thing. So the air with distinctive characteristics for where? For ocean, for vast plains or plateaus, the air will acquire distinctive characteristics based on what? Based on these areas. So that is important. And in what ways the characteristic we define in climatology, you understand? This is the temperature factor, humidity factor. These are the factors in which we can understand the nature, right? Their distinctive characteristic. So in terms of temperature and humidity, this is what we say is the air mass. That unique parcel of air, that unique mass of air, which has a distinctive characteristic, which is different from its surroundings, which is different from its regions. Different regions have different air masses. If you look into this global map, what you see? Different areas have different kinds of air masses, which is denoted by these codes, right? So this is because for a longer time that air has been here in that particular area. So it has acquired the characteristic of that particular area. So what is happening here? Basically air mass is a large body of air having little horizontal variation. Basically not much of variation is there. It is kind of homogeneous area. So homogeneous quality of air as well in terms of temperature, moisture, that is humidity, right? So this is the basic concept of air mass. Now let's elaborate further about the concept, about its formation, about its characteristics. Let's learn. So if we talk about the air mass form, Basically, it is an integral part of the global planetary wind system, right? Different places have different air mass. If you look into this global image, what you see? All these air masses, right? If you look into this particular belt, the feral cell that we say and the polar cell, these have these air masses of peculiar nature. When you are in tropics, this is the larger area where you have insulation and different places have different kind of air masses. What you see? This varies. There is a change in characteristic. So what are the factors now? Let's understand what are those important points which are associated with this formation. So pressure belts are the first important thing. Now remember equatorial low, subtropical high and subpolar low and polar high. These pressure belts across these latitudes as we have already learnt in the pressure systems. That is the most important thing, right? Because of which the wind blows, right? Wind moves from one place to the other. Then wind movement of the nature that is we have already learnt in terms of permanent winds, secondary winds, local winds. That is another factor which is important. And the extent from surface to lower stratosphere. Now we are talking about not just horizontal but also the vertical movement from the ground. So they extend where? From surface to lower stratosphere. That is important. That is in terms of across thousands of kilometers we are talking now. 
So that is where their influence is. So these are largely the principal air masses of the world that you see right from all the belts that you see, the different pressure belts and their nature across the equator. So that is important here. Now, there is something which is most important to learn whenever we are talking about air masses and that topic is source regions. And now why are they called source regions? The first important thing is that it is the source of formation of these peculiar winds with peculiar characteristic. That is why it is source, right? It is origin point. And regions, remember, homogeneity, the principle for region is homogeneity. It has to be unique from the others, the outsides. So that is why it is source regions, right? The homogeneous surfaces over which air masses form, these are called source regions. And what are the source regions all about? The main source regions are high pressure belts in subtropics giving rise to tropical air mass. Remember, from the subtropical to the tropics to the equatorial, there is a flow. So this is where westerlies and trade winds are also formed, right? So subtropical belt, high pressure belt becomes one of the major source regions of the world, right? The source region establishes heat and moisture equilibrium. Now here is a catch. What is the equilibrium between the moisture, the amount of moisture that will be there in the air, right? Hot air has more moisture capacity, more moisture taking capacity. Cold air is saturated, it is dense, it does not have much of space for more moisture, right? So that is where there is an equilibrium established and that's why it is more of a stable nature for a longer time period. So heat and moisture equilibrium is the must in terms of the air mass formation. Right. So if you look here in this particular map, what do you see? CP, it is the continental polar air mass, which is basically what? Cold and dry in nature. Then you have maritime. So the influence of what? The oceans is here. So it is cool as well as humid. Right. So maritime polar. Right. What do you see in this? It is maritime tropical. So as you go southwards, you become in, come into the tropics. And what do you see? Maritime tropical, if it is near the coastal areas. Right. And if it is there in the interior then what is there it is continental it is in the interior of the continent so this is how source regions have their own characteristics which influence these particular winds their characteristics in terms of temperature and moisture that we have learned right so that's why these source regions are important so when we have learned about this concept of source regions so let's understand that there are five major source regions in the world what are these five major source region First is warm tropical and subtropical oceans, right? So they are warm tropical or subtropical oceans, that is important. Then subtropical hot desert, they are also very unique. The relatively high latitude oceans, remember, high latitude oceanic areas, that is important. And then very cold snow covered continents in high latitudes, that is important. And then further, the permanently ice covered continents. So basically what you see here is the variation of solar insulation that we have already studied across latitudes. That becomes one of the major factors because every part, either land part or ocean part, has become a major source region as you see here. So warm tropical, subtropical hot desert, relatively colder high latitude oceans or maybe high latitude land areas which are covered with snow or permanently covered snow areas. So these are the major source regions on earth that we need to remember. Now, the most important point here is what are the conditions for formation of air masses? How are these air masses generated? So we already know what happens in this particular images. If you see what you observe here, the divergence is there and the convergence is there of different air, right? So if there is a low pressure system here, what is happening? The wind from outside is coming towards this low pressure, right? And remember what is happening, it is a heated area. So what happens, this wind is going up. And when this wind is going up, it reaches a dew point where it forms clouds, it rains and the dry cold air goes outwards. So this is divergence, this is one phenomenon. Now at the high pressure, what happens? Because it's a high pressure, remember the wind is going outwards to the other areas where there is a low pressure. So this is kind of a high pressure system, which is now convergence system because remember the wind is coming falling here from different areas right that's why this is exerting a pressure right pressure on the ground wind and that is why this area becomes a high pressure region so if something is pushed from up what will happen to the 
wind that is here it will start moving away from there right you're pushing something and it is going outward so this is the high pressure low pressure system that we have already learned throughout the earlier lectures as well in the formation of these cell convective cells right polar cell hadley cell feral cell how these cells operate how jet streams form this is because of this interaction of these phenomena only right so source regions should be extensively studied in terms of what gentle divergent air circulation slightly at higher pressure now it is important that source region is extensive with what with gentle divergent air circulation so it has to be gentle it cannot be turbulent because it has to remain there for a longer time so that is important so in atmospheric stability and instability we have learned about these processes remember so stable condition is important that is most important for a source region that is important here in terms of the formation of air mass and areas with high pressure but little pressure difference now this is where ideal source region exists if there is a change in pressure it will be in stable condition remember atmospheric instability will be there so what you require for source region is not instability rather it should be stable right so when it is stable it basically means there is not much of pressure difference right and therefore there are no major source regions in mid latitudes why because mid latitude has lots of this you know intermixing change in pressure gradient right so mid latitude is basically what the feral cell here you have hadley cell here you have polar cell hot air coming cold air coming and then there is intermixture so it is an instable area so instable area does not have much of source region so either it will be in the polar areas largely or in the tropical areas largely which have a stable conditions of their pressure systems that is the most important situation right so accordingly the following types of air masses are recognized on the earth now you look into this mtct mpcp ca so it is mtct mpcp ca these are the five types maritime tropical continental tropical maritime polar continental polar and continental arctic now you do one thing you can stop this video here or you can draw a world map for yourself where you can actually locate these empty cities right so where is the, all the empty largely you see empty is here empty is here all across on the both sides of equator so this is empty what is this maritime tropical oceanic areas right in the tropics then you have continental tropics which is ct and where is ct located you look here this is ct right this is ct so what is it continental areas in the tropics in the tropics where you have continents this is where the interior of the continents have this ct so if you just understand your temperature and pressure belts you can easily understand the concept of these air masses their distribution and you can also map them so you see cp ca all these are here so cp ca is here largely in the closer to the polar belts right so what you observe in the both side mp mp ca this is distributed almost normally as it should be in the tropics as well as the subtropics as well as the polar areas but there is one thing that is contrasting between north and south of the equator and now by this time you already know this what is that that southern hemisphere has largely ocean surfaces it does not have much of land surfaces so those areas which are marine in nature of air masses are majorly there in where in the southern hemisphere so southern hemisphere has more of these features which are ocean based source regions so these mt is actually more in where in the southern hemisphere this mp is more in the southern hemisphere this is what the change does of this source region that is topography so the land masses or the ocean that will all be there as part of the basic part of the formation of these air masses that are important so the first one that we discuss is the continental polar air mass what is its characteristics the source region of the air masses are arctic basin north america eurasia antarctica so you have cp and now you know where is the cp this particular belt right this is important now these air masses are characterized by dry cold and stable conditions that we already know i have discussed it in detail frigid air clear and stable air right so this is important and during summer the weather is less stable with lesser prevalence of anti cyclonic winds warmer land masses and lesser snow so during summer when the sun is actually shifting northwards then there is a summer here so what happens during summer it is less stable because we have more of energy flow and little intermixing happening so stability is reduced that is important to understand 
right and anticyclone becomes a little weaker because anticyclone is from where the wind is going outwards right so it is weaker so wind is coming inside so this is actually a situation where these continental polar air masses are now lesser in strength during the summers that is important now the second one as you know is mp that is not member of parliament it is maritime polar air mass and maritime polar air mass is what basically when we say maritime it is oceanic and when we say polar it means it is close to the polar belt right so MP you see here as well and MP you see in the southern hemisphere as well. So basically the word itself is polar air mass. So nature has to be of the cool. So cool, moist and unstable nature. Remember and here high humidity, overcast skies, occasional fog and precipitation is also there. And it is important because it is found here in the zone of mixing 40 to 60 degree latitude. And this is the zone of mixing remember. That's why it is not that stable largely. Okay, because this particular portion has little mixing of air, right? So conditions over source regions are cool. These are regions which cannot stagnate for long, right? But still they have certain pockets of air masses. That is important. So during summer, the weather is clear, fair and stable. This is one thing here. Now, in the continental tropical air mass, as we know, the CT portion, so continental, it is interior of the continent, it will be warmer, it will be dry because no moisture is there and that's why it is stable. So dry throughout the year, interior of the continents, remember this is CT for you, right? So CT is what is continental tropical air mass. And the fifth one is the maritime, but tropical maritime, that is tropical air mass, MT. So remember in tropics which is maritime is this one. So you have maximum in the southern hemisphere. So this MT is what? It is again warm. Remember it is tropical so it is warm, humid and unstable. It is not that stable. Areas like Mexican Gulf, Pacific, Atlantic, all the oceanic major oceanic areas in the southern hemisphere. And if it is unstable basically means what? Cloud formation happens. So mostly overcast skies are there, fog formation is there and convection happens, cumulus cloud formation happens in this particular belts, right? So these are the five major belts as you see so remember this particular world map from cpca to ct to this me in between right and then you have this mt and mp so this is what we basically know as the concept of air masses so now when we have learned about the concept of air mass its formation and its various types in the lectures to come we'll be talking more on air fronts so stay tuned stay safe and all the best wishes